Hello everybody, it's WJ here and welcome back to the Nord. Today we start with filling in this little triangle. I thought it would be nice to show at least a little bit of house plopping, as the city will grow a fair bit today and this small patch won't take up too much time. After this I'll show you how I place an extra level upon a building, create one building out of several smaller ones and make a small plaza around the main church. But now I'm just placing houses. I wish there were some houses on the workshop with the facade on an angle, so the roofs of the houses would form straight lines, like this. I've tried to edit some buildings with PO, but it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So maybe, again, I should get into 3D modeling myself. I just wish I had more time. For now I think this is the best I can do with the buildings I have. Let's finish this up and go to a beautiful building by Acapulco that is a bit on the low side compared to the buildings surrounding it. So I place a po version on top to get an extra level. But it looks crappy like this with those doors. So I move the notes of the bottom floor a bit into the house. And I kinda like how that turns out. Don't worry about the sides where the roof of the original building still stick out a bit. We will hide that with some other buildings. And this is what happens when you build a city without connecting it to the outside world. At first I wanted to wait with the connection until I was sure where I wanted it to be. But then I thought the city was growing too large and I didn't want too much traffic to try and get into the city at once. It seems I was a little on the late side. While we're watching this traffic jam I wanted to give a shout out to some of my regular viewers who really motivate me to keep going with these videos, even though they take up pretty much all of my free time. Julius, Justin, Kai, Lien, Mihai and Headspike. Thank you for being awesome and helping me out when I'm stuck. And if anyone feels left out, I'm sorry. I'll shout you out next time for being cool. Now, back to the city. I'll move the church to a better place, so I'll have some room. I am going to build a Waag, using several PO buildings. A little tip, when you place an object with procedural objects, it always aligns to the underlying grid. So when you want to create something out of several elements, first place them down and build it up before you move the whole thing to where you want it. This way all the elements will be perfectly aligned. The building I'm building is a waag or weighing house. It is a public building where goods were weighed. Most of these buildings were built before 1800, prior to the establishment of international standards for weight. As public control of the weight of goods was very important, they were run by local authorities. Weighhouses would often be near a market square or town center. Between 1550 and 1690, people accused of witchcraft were at times brought to a weighhouse in order to be subjected to a witch test to prove their innocence for payment as nobody was deemed to be a witch after this test. 
If a person was found to be lighter than a certain weight, he or she was deemed guilty. Weigh houses were especially common in the Netherlands, Germany and Poland. Outside those countries, the public weighing usually didn't take place in a special building, but in a town hall, guild hall, courthouse or the like. The Waag in Alkmaar is the main inspiration for the look of this building. It is the only Waag that is still used for its original purpose, during the cheese market, every Friday. But we'll talk about that event in a later episode. The building was originally a church, but with the addition of a few side buildings, turned into a Waag. That's why the building has its characteristic tower and overall shape. Now back to what I'm doing on screen. I've enlarged some buildings, but aside from that there isn't too much editing needed, apart from getting some chimneys out of the way. On the left and right side of the entrance I wanted some large doors where goods could be brought into the building. I tried to make them from this cork church tower by getting rid of the complete top part. Sadly I didn't like the look of it. But I did like this to cover up all those windows and get a more churchy feel to it with that one large window. So the other side will now become the front of the building. I'll be using the same facade as the sides to emphasize this. I wish we could use the painter mod on POs so I could give the two buildings that make up the facade a somewhat similar color. But as that's not possible, we'll do with what we have. Let's finish the backside, delete those ugly side buildings with the doors and then move all to the location where I want it to be. I still want those doors on the side. So I tried making some textures and used the PO cubes to get them onto the building. What you see here was my first attempt. The building behind it has this ridge that sticks out. I want that gone. But finding the right notes to move is very tricky. I cut out most of the footage of me clicking and moving the wrong notes. But in the end I managed to make it look decent enough. I felt my first attempt at doors was looking terrible, but the second version looks way better. Now at this time I didn't have any ideas on how to make the market square in front of it. So I decided to work on the church square first. The building is the Laurenskerk by Dutch Mountain. Although the real life church is located in Rotterdam, you'll find many churches that look quite similar throughout Holland. After adjudging the road slightly to make more room for the church to fit in, I go and have a look at what type of pavement I want. I'd like to use cobblestones. And because I've used PO squares and cubes with custom textures everywhere, it would be best to use them here as well. But first I need to figure out where they have to be placed. So 
I continued the red pavement roads to encircle the square. I needed to get a smaller patch of pavement in, so I used the cube instead of the square, because the textures won't get stretched and become all wonky. And then I copied them around. At some places the squares actually work better than the cubes, as the stretched out versions work better in these shallow corners. For the cobblestones I decided to use these darker textures, to set them more apart from the road pavement. The ground is a bit higher here in the middle for some reason, so I raised them slightly. After copying some, I decided to raise them even more, to get them just above the pavement. I used the cubes, so I can stretch out the sides to align them to the road without messing up the texture. Don't worry about the little gap between the cobbles and the pavement. We'll cover that up with some curbs after I've filled in the entire square. First, I thought of using these curves, but they are a bit too bright and grey for my liking. These other ones have a slight yellowish tint that I think fits way better. So I'll use these all around the square. There's nothing much to say really, I'm just adjusting some nodes slightly on the corners. And that's pretty much it.
After the curves are done, I place some planters with beautiful oak trees. Then I decide to place some more buildings around the square so it looks a little bit better. And after all that, this episode comes to a close. I hope you have enjoyed it and that maybe I have shown you a few tips and tricks to improve your building skills or inspire you in any way. If you have any questions or suggestions, do leave them in the comment section. And if you like this video, please give it a nice thumbs up. Next episode will actually detail the buildings I promised last episode, along with some canal side work and the market square next to the Waag. But for now, have a great day and hope to see you next time. Bye bye.